Right now, I think you need to own stocks that can work regardless of how things play out with this pandemic or the protests or the government's attempt to reopen the economy. That means you want powerful long-term themes. How about like 5G? How about like the rise of the data center? Which brings me to Kramer fave Marvell Technology. It's a semiconductor company that makes chips for networking, communications, and storage. They've got a ton of 5G and data center exposure. And that's why I've been recommended for ages. It's why we own a big position for our charitable trust, which you can follow on by joining the ActionAlertsPlus.com club. And it's why I put it in the Mad COVID-19 index six weeks ago also known as the Kramer COVID index. Sure enough, last week, Marvell reported a spectacular quarter with a substantial top and bottom line beat coupled with terrific guidance. That set the stock surging 9% on Friday. It just keeps running another 5% today. Marvell's now up roughly 30% for the year. Can it keep climbing? Let's check in with Matt Murphy. He's the bankable president and CEO of Marvell Technology. Get a better read on the quarter and where the company's headed. Mr. Murphy, welcome back to Mad Money. Hi, Jim. How you doing? Well, Matt, it's happy 25th. Uh, birthday for Marvell, but I think you need to walk through our viewers. This is not the Marvell of 25 years ago or even 25 months ago. It's one that really is in keeping with what we're watching right now in, that's playing out in technology. Yeah, Jim, it's been a, first of all, it's been a great 25 year uh, celebration of the company this year. Uh, but you're right, we've gone through a pretty substantial transformation really over the last three to four years. You know, uh, myself and, and, a, and a small team of us joined the company about four years ago, and we really set out to uh, transform the company into a long-term player with a real focus around what we viewed as the data infrastructure opportunity. And I think as you can see, as the strategies played out over the last few years, uh, it's extremely relevant in today's environment uh, with you know now major growth drivers for the company um, at our back, including 5G, cloud, uh, segments of, of enterprise, as well as automotive for, for next generation opportunities. You know, it's funny. Automotive was the one that I was the really the flavor of the day today because China Automotive was up 11 and percent. And I thought of you because when I went over your quarter, the one thing I was worried about was like, oh, darn, he's got 5G. I love he's got data. Show, but he's got auto. But the truth is, is that auto can suddenly get hot, right? That's right. And, and for us, we have uh, today have actually a very small percentage of our revenue in automotive. But the exciting part is we've now secured design wins for our Ethernet products, which is think of it as the network and the backbone of all future automotive uh, systems. Uh, we, we've got design wins across 16 different car OEMs three of which are going to ramp up this year, and then the balance of them are going to be for model year 21. And to your point, while there's been a very short-term disruption in, in automotive production uh, d- due to the coronavirus, uh, there are certainly signs that that situation is improving. And so we believe by the time uh, the car models that we're in, which are all the brand new models ramping next year, um, there are certainly very positive signs of production resuming. And I think the first leading indicator is certainly China, China Auto uh, with a strong recovery today. Yeah, I find that China has been a, a forerunner for everything right now. Now, 5G. Uh, a lot of people worried uh, Huawei, the government had issues, not you, but government had issues with Huawei. But it turns out that there's more than just Huawei. And it looks like that you are embedded or part of the 5G of every major telco company. How did that happen? That's right. Well, yeah, for, first of all, you know, historically, you know, Huawei had, had, had been a customer of Marvell's. And as you mentioned, due to the entity list restrictions starting last year, you know, our, our exposure to, to that customer has gone down pretty dramatically. Um, you know, if you just take the 5G uh, progress we've made in isolation, you know, let's head back to really 2018. We, we closed a transformational acquisition that year with a company called Cavium who, when we bought it, had uh, one design win on a key component at one major OEM, which was Samsung. Uh, through our own efforts, right, our own team, uh, the combined team now of, of Marvell and Cavium, plus a key acquisition we made last year of, of, a, uh, of a Vera semiconductor, we've now secured through our own efforts organically, as well as through acquisitions, um, significant content across all of the, the, the remaining key four players in 5G systems. 
And it's a really a story of a diversity of customers, a diversity of products and technologies that we supply into the radio base stations, uh, a multitude of components. And think of it as pretty much all of the key elements of data processing, which are very specialized, Jim, for 5G. Marvell has unique uh, technology for that that's extremely differentiated from, from the rest of the market. And, and yes, you're right, we're exposed to uh, all the other OEMs, and which then exposes us to every major geography right. that is going to roll out 5G starting now and into the future. One last question people should understand, maybe you should explain, that yes, you bought Cavi and you bought another company. At the same time, though, you did sell another company and your balance sheet's actually better than it was 18 months ago. Yeah, Jim, I mean, you know, we, you know, and I've had a philosophy since I joined, which was, I'd call it solving solving for value and not necessarily solving for overall aggregate revenue. And so even when I first joined in 2016, uh, we did a number of small divestitures and portfolio repositioning uh, prior to the caveat acquisition. And, and those moves, plus our own self-help, if you remember from 2016 to 2017, sure. roughly doubled the value of the company. And we were able to use that currency to do the successful caveat deal. Um, in, as you point out, last year, we made a decision to divest our Wi-Fi uh, product line to NXP. Uh, we closed that transaction in December, and we were able to actually uh, transfer that business to, to NXP, which is a great home for our team and in that product area. And that was able to not only fund the, the purchase of Avera and Aquantia, which is also a key purchase for us for, for Ethernet technology. But it, to your point, it strengthened our balance sheet significantly. And we added roughly 600 million in, 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 in proceeds when all of the, the moving pieces were done. So a lot of heavy lifting last year, Jim. I mean, we bid off probably more than management, more, <laughs> more than most management teams would doing two acquisitions and one divestiture in a single year. But, it's a, but I think these portfolio moves plus our own efforts have really put us in a great position now to be the leading company in what we call the data infrastructure oh, opportunity. You absolutely are. I want to thank you so much, Matt, for what you've done. Happy 25th anniversary. You are the best, the best pure play, I think, also in 5G. That's my own view. That's Matt Murphy's president CEO of Marvell Technologies, MRVL. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Jim. All right, don't miss my friend Scott Wapner on Crisis in America tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern. And, of course, stick with Kramer. Tonight at 7 p.m., Crisis in America. One Seattle business owner trying to recover from a one-two punch from the pandemic and the protests. Plus, what responsibility do CEOs have to speak out? And the growing tensions at Facebook. All tonight at 7 p.m. with Scott Wapner. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.